Hello, welcome to Subjective Insights. Um, more on the front today, I think. I think more on the front. I've had a very fucking second F-E-C-U-N-D mind about the fronts over the last day or so. The front, another good metaphor for the front is in, in the Matrix. You've got the Agent Smith, right? And he can inhabit any individual that's within the system still. And um, when we're looking at it in this sense, you would say those that are outside the system are those that kind of are living without a front, maybe? Whatever. Now, you'll see Agent Smith being activated in people, the front's being activated in people, the defence mechanisms being activated. Often, say somebody's suffering or struggling with something and you want to help them with that struggle, um, the immediate knee-jerk reaction of us when we wish to help people is to tell them what, they're, what it is about what they're doing that's causing their struggle, their suffering. But the thing is, the front or the person that's trapped by the front will take that as an attack. They will take that as a judgment upon the per- them. And it's because they still believe and rightly so, I mean, justifiably so. Society has taught them through long and hard ordeal that they have to attain to certain standards in order to be accepted. I mean, within our current society, there's a monetary standard, you know, that in order to go out and engage in social activity or a lot of the social activities, it costs money. And um, this, um, the, the front or the ego then takes this on to another level where even if they don't have money, they will try and appear as if they do have money, which is why you'll find on council estates and in impoverished areas, especially in the UK and in America, there is a proliferation of jewellery and gold that they all wear, these, these signals of wealth. And they don't actually have the real wealth to back it up, which is why they spend most of their time on street corners and out in the alleys. <coughs> so they, they choose to by the appearance of wealth rather than actually have wealth and this is the same the same mechanism at work there is it what's at work when you try and tell people they should stop smoking because it's bad for them or they should save their money and all this kind of stuff is is the bad judgment is being taken as an attack through through the process of brainwashing called bringing up children because what the parent often does, the parent will express a negative judgment about what a child is doing, and that negative judgment is quite often followed up with a smack or some form of punishment. Um, When the child is older and an adult and the punishment is no longer there, the child will react to the negative judgment as if there is a punishment waiting behind it. It's much the same as what occurs in the Pavlov pavlovian dog experiment you know where you will ring a bell give the dog food and after a while the dog will associate the food with the bell and it will salivate when you press the bell even if there is no food now what this means is that if we're to help people we have to be much more diplomatic about it we have to be we have to kind of talk around the subject and generate an atmosphere of trust in which the person is willing to come out and talk about their problems. To come out and say to you, yeah, I know I'm being an idiot there, and it's damaging to me, but I can't help it kind of thing. (laughs) I hate roads. Now, all because I see that that's the right way of doing it, and that's the only way that works, and I also see this because my knee-jerk reaction is so hard to get over i can't help it especially in relationships everything's heightened in a relationship and um you can't help but keep wanting to change them immediately like right now and then the anger comes out to do that and also also because there's mutual claims and in families this happens a lot like parents are unable to forsake the parent role and to have the patience to generate within the child the the friendship relationship. I I, I perceive a good parent, a parent that has successfully done their job, as um, 
as a, as a, as a, as a, as a per, like a mother and father who make their roles as parents redundant, no longer necessary, that they bring up the child to equality. So they take it through the, you have to take it through the arduous brainwashing process of, um, of rearing, because if you don't, the child might end up in prison or like, you know, if children throw tantrums in public, and well, if adults throw tantrums in public, they get sectioned or, or arrested. So, so it's just the nature of reality. But a good parent will take the child through that traumatic process and then it will teach you that it's not serious, that all the reasons behind it, like it will teach you the rules of the game and make the child an equal. But if you're constantly, I mean, and behind it is love. If you're constantly saying, don't do that, you shouldn't do this. But, but behind that, the desire for control, especially from parents to children, is love. That's, what, that's what's behind everything, really, because we're social creatures. Um, but, and we're not in control of ourselves. I, I, and then what happens then is the parent tells the child or the growing up child they shouldn't be doing that. The child gets a thing because it's been conditioned to expect a punishment after the, you shouldn't be doing that. And, uh, and then it reacts to the parent in an aggressive manner. And then the parent's like, oh, fucking try to help you! And, and, and then it's just a, a, a whole kind of conversation that can be summed up in uh, 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 like that, you know, uh, escalating kind of. Uh. Anyway, goodbye.